Everybody come see the great show. Get a rope ball, triple loops and roll. Everybody come see the great show. Get a rope ball, triple loops and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sales Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark. Give me, give me, give me some time to think. I'm in the bathroom looking at me. Facing the mirror is all I need. Wait until the reaper takes my life. Never gonna get me out of life. I will live a thousand million lives. My patience is waning. Is this entertaining? My patience is waning. Is this entertaining? Hello and welcome to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark, episode number 492. I am one of your hosts, Blake, and I just started course minute recordings last week, and this is going to be a crazy couple of months for me podcasting, so I'm glad I planned some weeks off. Let me bring on my co-host. First of all, the biggest fan in the R-Truth fan club, and the biggest <laughs> on podcasting, Sal, how you doing? <laughs> um, I missed that comic relief. Back. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Talk, trust me, we'll talk about it later. It's on the red sheet. Oh. <laughs> and a very, very happy after a crazy football weekend. Man, the man middle legend, Mark Dad, how you doing? Hey, fabulous. It was an exciting weekend of football. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of ranting and raving. A lot of weather. And- <laughs> a lot of and, weather <laughs> and, the, and the, the weather related issues yeah we'll talk about everything trust me we'll talk about all the nfl later i do want to talk about everything but first of all what are we opening up the show with yeah this is your opening hey we're opening with a song by the wonderful group imagine dragons called bones and basically the reason why i picked that is because that's how the cold feels it's coming <laughs> into your bones <laughs> well, that's a good line. I like that actually. I like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I like that one. We'll talk more about it in a minute. Um, we'll pass. Um, let me just do our quick plugs out of the way. Here's this. Yep. Um, go pick up Andy's book. I know I am available right now on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Aaron Camp Publishing in English and Spanish. And go listen to the Andy Mandy Show on all podcasting platforms. One more thing I want to do off as a shout out to a friend of the show and a friend of mine, Brian Ripper. Who um actually this week we finally released the final episode of the All Amount of the Mod Disney podcast that went up this week. I listened to the whole show today while I was working. Not gonna lie, it was actually really sad because at the end of that show it was really sad, but it was a really good yeah. show. So congratulations, to Brian! I put a big shout out on my Insta story and my Facebook story, and he um liked the post. So um he did, I don't know he was podcasting on for sixteen years. And the wow. funny part is because it took like a, a few year break between things, so they it ended up uh, the show ended up at four hundred and seventy one episodes when it was all said and done. So, wow. congratulations wow. to him. Let me make sure I shouted him out here as part of the show. One button. Yeah, I think we said that again. But I was going to say first of all, before anyone asks, um, thousands a little under the weather today. I'm also a little under the weather today. <laughs> so it's two of us sound a little off today. That is why. So I'm just going to throw that out there now. Um. And believe it or not, I'm actually in long sleeves because I'm actually cold, despite the fact that I'm in a heated house. I'm actually cold today. So I was like, actually in my hoodie earlier today. I just took it off about an hour ago. Yeah, I I, I had well actually we'll just do that. God's cold nights. Couldn't resist. I could not resist. Okay. Can I say this has been one of the strangest we don't usually talk weather on the show because it's usually dated by the time the episode drops. <laughs> on Fridays. But fucking hell, if this was not the craziest weather week I have ever seen in this country, <laughs> like I have never seen a week like this before, ever. I, I, I've never seen so many so many cities and so many states affected by storms and cold and snow and all at the same fucking time. I've never seen that. I, I saw at the beginning of the week it actually snowed in Tennessee. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, I know that um, Raw was in um, what was Raw? I forgot where Raw was. Little Rock, Arkansas. And they had um, half the crowd didn't show up because they couldn't get to the building because of a blizzard. 
Wow. So like they had they even dressed it on the air. I didn't notice by the way when Raw started it. I don't I don't know if you noticed this now when they when they started Raw, they didn't go to the ring. They showed a big pile of snow outside the building. <laughs> that was hilarious to me. I'm like, oh that made Oops. me laugh. That made me laugh really hard. But um I do wanna two things I have to actually address on the air. One, I'm actually going to do an on the air apology to death. Because oh, wow. on the weekend we were talking about the weather around the country and we were making fun of the guys and te- everyone in Texas because it was like 15 degrees when the Packers on um, Cowboy game was going on. And then yeah, they, they, had, they had the clip of all the, all the fans running into the building and they were they were having some fun with it on Fox. Um the dad comes up to me and he's like, I heard it was I heard it was like fucking freezing in Florida. The thing is we have a lot of friends in Florida and I heard nothing about this. So I'm just like, oh okay, well, whatever. Maybe they got their states confused because every other state had a fucking wind chill number. Well, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Uh, I started sending me on TikTok last night when I was going to TikTok, and they showed the map of Florida on Sunday. And apparently, while it was like 85 degrees in Miami and 75 degrees in Orlando and all the normal cities, apparently in Pensacola, Florida, it was 19 degrees. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So, That's a big difference. There you go. I just had to throw well, it out there. You know, it, God, most of the state that usually has the warmer weather this time of season got hit. I mean, I was stunned when I saw that. Like, Tennessee what? got hit because I got a friend who lives in Tennessee, and they said they got over six inches. And after that, because they don't plan for snow and ice removal, they had no idea how to deal with this. Apparently, West, Al- used- Apparently West Dallas hasn't planned for snow and ice removal either because they still haven't cleared the damn streets. Yeah, and <laughs> sorry, they don't I'm, use- I'm really annoyed with them today. I'm sorry, I'm really yeah. annoyed with West Dallas today. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and look at Buffalo. Holy cow! Yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. Like, that was bad. Like that was insanely bad. <laughs> um, one other thing I want to say. This is just me venting because this has been that kind of week. Um, one of my pillow friends in New York, big runners, um, good friend of mine, big, his wife, a big runner. They actually did like a bunch of them. Um, they did all the Disney runs, you know, like a couple months ago, like the marathon and the 5K and 10K. They did them all a couple months ago. Um, she put the post on Facebook saying, well, it's not exactly running weather here as we're about to deal with the deep breeze in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> what is about <laughs> like, like last night? Literally, I said to Sal, it was negative twenty-two wind chill last night. Um, and she puts up this post, and it's thirty-two degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> I and I look in the comments, and I was the only one in the comment. I'm like, um, I I would love that weather right now. I would love oh, that number. Oh <laughs> hell yeah! Oh hell yeah! Come on, people want like be, be, be a little more subconscious. I know you're thinking with all people in your own world, but be a little bit more subconscious of other people on the post like that. That's like hoodie weather for us. That's oh, I was call it hockey jersey weather. That's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to address that at the beginning of the show because everyone's dealing with it. Um, yeah, we what we're gonna be into, but like ten inches of snow, Dad, on Saturday. Yeah, after all was said and done. Kind of snow, but like other parts of the state had almost two feet of snow. <laughs> like, it was oh. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And the reason our number was to look is we're by, by, by the lake. We had a lake effect, so we didn't get nearly yeah. as bad as the places of the state. And the weathermen actually kind of called this one right because after we got done getting all the snow out, that's when the temperature started dropping. And everything. After the weathermen, I got to give up. I think it was um, TMJ4. They went on Facebook and they actually apologized for being wrong about the number because they said it was going to be higher than it actually ended up being. <laughs> oh, wow. So they actually apologized for the numbers being too low. <laughs> what a weird, weird week it's been. Plus, like, my schedule was all whacked up last week because of the snow and CJ had to have midterms rescheduled because of the snow. Like, it's been a, it was been a crazy fucking week. Yeah. But, speaking of a crazy week, And now, let's see what's going on in the wild world of sports. Well, before we get to the division of the weekend, I need to say something here. <laughs> <laughs> that was to all the Cowboys and Eagle fans out there. 
as a Giants fan, I enjoyed my weekend. I really did. <laughs> I really enjoyed my weekend. <laughs> Holy crap did I enjoy it. Both of your teams suck. You guys suck. Like, oh Baker, my lord. Baker Mania I, is running wild. What a what a fucking disaster those two teams are. And I had to laugh to start this off because holy fucking hell. <laughs> but yeah. Packers, it was... By the way, for those who did not see the Packers Cowboy game, don't let the final score fool you. The Packers killed them. They killed them in that game. <laughs> Dad, just throw it to you because I know you were enjoying that. You were enjoying oh, I, it. I, it this. Cool. This one was one for the ages, as always. And the commentating team on Fox they're all around the board. Laughing. They're almost laughing by the end. It was over. By the way, though, <laughs> on the pregame show, all the guys all went for Dallas, including Terry you know Bradshaw, who basically loves Jordan Love. Went for Dallas. You know what that reminded me of? Remember the Giants run when they were the six seed and they went all the way through her bowl, but they kept picking against them in every single game. <laughs> that, that reminded me of. Like, they kept picking against them in every game just because of the low seed. Like, uh, come on now. There's yeah. talent here. Listen, I mean, not only did Green Bay kind of lit the fuse and continue to go with it, at halftime, the score, Green Bay 27. Cowboy seven. Oh my god! I, I what I, in the I hell? Enjoy, I mean, enjoying myself. I really was. Who would have? Who would have thought that a young rebuilding team like the Packers, with their young crew, could come up and basically dominate about eighty percent of the game and kick ass, and to the point where at halftime, Jimmy Johnson made his meltdown tirade about. How the boys gotta get their head out of the ass and got it da, 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 whatever. Did I say though that 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 speech inspired me? <laughs> well, it got to the point where I thought for a second that he was going to have a coronary. That he was getting so animated about it. Well, his coach then, came out, and I liked it. I, I love that kind of stuff. And, and then Michael Strahan kind of plays off of going, "Yeah, you got me." More. I I don't think they had an idea where he was going to go with this. Or what, what what was going to come out of his mouth? Because that's how upset he was. He was literally upset with the Cowboys. And I, I'm thinking to myself... Put, didn't he just go into the Ring of Honor this year? Didn't he just go into the Ring of Honor? Uh, Hall, you mean Hall of Fame? No, the Ring of Honor. They went into the ring, he went into the Ring of Honor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So. And, um, you know, he to me, the way he was acting... I think you embarrassed the Cowboys more that way. I mean, no. <laughs> it was great though. I loved it. I loved every fucking second of it. And and and, and, and the owner Jerry Jones, when they were talking about things, I about love McCarthy, watching He goes, I, "I don't want to talk about it right now. I don't want to talk about it. I got a thing. Don't want to talk about it." I Just love watching. Really him short and thing. snippy. My favorite thing in the world watching him be upset. It really is. I love that. I'm sorry. I hate the Cowboys. I hate the Eagles. I hate those two teams so fucking much. And I loved every second of this. I, I loved it when they were taking shots to the, uh, the, uh, the owner's box. And you got Jerry Jones and Roger Goodell there. And at the third quarter, Jerry Jones was not watching the game. He had his back to the game. He's talking <laughs> to Roger Goodell, who's watching the game. I'm sorry. So the other thing I have to bring up is the Eagles game. The Eagles decided to not show up to their game at all. They decided not to show up. <laughs> and my favorite part is why, legitimately, because I wasn't watching the game, watching Raw, but I was watching back. I'm looking at highlights, looking at stuff on my phone to keep track of the score. And I know Stout was watching the game for Baker Mayfield reasons. And um, <laughs> I was watching the score, and I'm like, I'm literally, maybe half 80. I was literally laughing. I was literally sitting in my chair laughing. This is embarrassing. <laughs> it's awesome how embarrassing it was because they were 10 and 1. They were 10 and 1 this season. Like, that's how bad that was. Now, yeah. any thoughts on anything this weekend? Oh, yeah. We got about, we, we, we talk about Buffalo and how bizarre that game was. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's just with the Eagles. I mean, yeah, they were, they were 10 and 1. And then they lost, what, five out of six? Mm hmm. 
I think it was, and then just this embarrassing loss. I mean, uh, just it just goes to show that you know you could be good one year, and then you could be good for two thirds of the following year, and then you could just let it all go to shit. <laughs> and then the playoffs happen, and weird shit happens in the playoffs. It happens every year. It, um, it seemed like this weekend was meant for the underdogs. Well, this weekend was meant for weirdness because we we had what was the one of the weirdest situations in Buffalo with the three feet of snow that hit, and they had to postpone the game for two days. But it postponed the game until Monday afternoon, um, which pissed off a lot of people. By the by, I would uh, imagine, yeah. Can I just say, no, it wasn't even the fans. It was people that wanted to watch the game on Sunday. Yeah. That's the pissed right. off people. And I'm like, as much as I love a snow game like anybody else, I love a snow game. I prefer if a snow game happens while the game's going on and it's snowing during the game. Not when a massive snowstorm is hitting and the visibility is at nothing. You can't see a damn thing. Like, I might actually be able to watch the game. Like, <laughs> I mean, watch the game. It, only, watch the it only, watch. only makes I'm sense. Out I'm not going out the window for that. <laughs> it, it only makes sense that you want to have a game where you can see all the hash lines and the boundaries. Oh, yeah, I, 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 we just all had a discussion in the past. If it's going to snow during a game, let us snow during a game. Right. Right. Hash lines as you go. I mean, we saw right. had a discussion before. But right. it's different. Yeah. When there's three feet of snow. <laughs> <laughs> and a massive blizzard. Like, it's really different. Like, it's doing completely different <laughs> things. And my favorite part of that, watching the game on Monday, was apparently, I didn't find it until later on like, during the second half, that they they the, the, um, they announced when they even got to the building that they weren't telling, they, they said, sit wherever you want. There was no assigned seating. Oh. For that game when they got to the building because no one could find the seat numbers. Nobody could figure out where this <laughs> were. Nobody could figure out where anything was. Because... The the seats on the rows were still kind of covered in, in covered, snow. kind of covered. They shuffled everything but the seats. Well, well, they well everything but the seats. Let, let's let's just say that um they had a chilly reception waiting for them as they sat down. Well, I like the fact that I give, but I got to give the Bills Mafia a lot of props. I we love giving them shit. I love giving them shit. I mean, I was making fun of them when they were decided we're going to go through faming tables in the parking lot for some reason. I thought that was weird. But yes. I, the, the visual of watching him throwing up snowballs to celebrate touchdowns just made my whole day. Like, that made my day. Wasn't that when they got to a point as, you know, they were making touchdowns or something, instead of, like, throwing stuff, they were throwing the, the like, the light snow and made, so they like, were throwing snow snowballs confetti. in the air, and then it was landing, and the visuals were amazing. It was like rockets going off in the crowd. Like, it was yeah. an amazing visual. <laughs> it, it, it was like snow <laughs> confetti. I loved it. Like, that was a great thing to watch on television. Like, that was great TV. Like, that for me was good yeah. TV. <sighs> well, that leads us to the NFC, the, um, the um, NFL Divisional Weekend. We got have, we have four games this weekend. It's going to be a crazy weekend of football. Yep. We'll start in the AFC. And we have, we talk about upstart. Upstart used to Texans. Holy shit. <laughs> With CJ Stroud. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. I did not expect this. Mm-hmm. Versus the um, team everyone predicting to win the Super Bowl this year, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Upset? Mm-hmm. Or did Baltimore hold this off? Sal? Um, I'm calling for an upset here. I I think that Texans are gonna really sneak one in. I'm and I'm talking like maybe like a three point victory kind of a deal. Um, but yeah, I'm I, I'm going with Texans here. I was actually leading the same way. They're like a team of destiny. I feel like they're like one of those teams of destiny where it's like yeah. they should not be here and they are. So yeah. I think Houston's gonna pull this massive upset and then it's gonna like. Everyone's like par. Everyone's like parlays and predictions, true path predictions of the Baltimore Ravens are going down the shitter. It's exactly what's going to happen. Dad. <laughs> I I gotta go with the Houston Texans only because of how strong they've been playing, you know, and they they're hungry. And if this is what it's going to take them to get to the next level, then great. Uh, at least you know that Texas has one decent football team. <laughs> Did oh, you have to see oh. the um? Did you see the, the, the graphic that Houston has won more playoff games since their inception than Dallas? 
Yes. <laughs> no. Sorry, <laughs> that. Oh wow. But it was like CBS, CBS Sports. If no, if you're not watching, follow me CBS Sports on Instagram. They are a bunch of troll wise asses on that account. Like whoever's making the graphics on the CBS Sports account are a bunch of wise asses, but put up some amazing <laughs> graphics all the time. Like, they put up great graphics. <laughs> Because that was one of the graphics they pulled off was that Houston has more wins in the playoff than Dallas since Houston, Texas came into the league. <laughs> just, just to show you how things are in perspective. But it, on, that's hilarious. On, 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 on Facebook, right? And I came across this today. It's like one of the end caps in a Walmart store in Walmart Sciences Clearance. And basically underneath it, it says, just take it. <laughs> All Dallas Cowboy memorabilia. That's the amazing. cups, the glass, the flags, whatever. That's absolutely incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Um, I was actually looking to see if I could find the graphic because it was really made me laugh when I saw that. But we'll move on to the next matchup. It is Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Number one, this is Patrick Mahomes' first ever road game, not including not including Super Bowl games in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. First ever road game, and Josh Allen has never beaten the Chiefs in the playoffs. So, with those two things out there, <laughs> um, I think the Chiefs are on the downtick. I don't think the Chiefs are going to win this game. I'm leading for Buffalo, honestly. I, 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 I want the new blood. I've got new blood this year. And Buffalo has a, like, I want Buffalo to do better than they are. I think they should finally be able to beat Kansas City, especially at home. And who knows what the weather's going to be like next week. So, like, who knows? Um, so? Yeah, um... I, I, I'm rooting for Buffalo on this one. I uh, want to see an end to this fucking Taylor Swift nonsense uh, as early as possible before it gets to the Super Bowl and her and her her boyfriend and her, her now retired future brother-in-law could just sit at home and shut the fuck up. Fuck Taylor Swift. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Okay, I'm, I'll do it after we're done with this. Yeah, Dad, you're pick. I have something else I want to share well, with bring the top of the show. Got since since Taylor says she's not performing in the halftime show. Super actually, Bowl. she said she's not. Actually, from what I'm heard, she's not going to be at the game. I heard that yesterday. She may not be at really. The game. Yeah, because I was my comment was you know she's got to get watch the Super Bowl somehow because she's not performing in it. So oh uh, yeah, because she's gonna have a problem getting a Super Bowl if she wants to go to the Super Bowl. Like that's an issue for a celebrity. Like that's the issue at all. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest Maybe. here. We've seen the celebrities at the Super Bowl. We've seen them. So, I, you know, I gotta go with Patrick Mahomes only because I think I you know. know he's he's the unpredictable wild card in this. I mean, when he's on, he's really on, but when he's off, you know. So I I gotta go to KC on this one. All right, we'll jump to the NFC. Um, we'll have to do the first one late last. We'll do Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Versus the fucking Detroit Lions. They finally won. Who would have thought, who way, thought you would have the team like Detroit Lions in in, in a spot like this? I, 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 I want to say I, I would I laughed watching the game. Could they have could they have made it any more difficult for their fans, by the way? Like you couldn't like blow this game out. You couldn't like get another touchdown. No, it had to be a one point game until the buzzer. To drive those fans fucking crazy. That's gonna happen with the Jets when mm-hmm. win a playoff game. The same thing's gonna happen. Or it's like when they finally make the playoffs, I'm like, or, or the game that they have to clinch the playoff spot finally with the Jets when they finally clinch the playoff spot. And like that last game is literally gonna come down to the wire and everyone's gonna be on pins and needles, so that actually happens. Exactly <laughs> what happened in Detroit here. The same thing. <laughs> like, oh my god, like this could not have been more pins and needles. I'm intrigued by this matchup because this is definitely not a matchup I expected at all. Uh, Scott, what do you think? Um, I mean, I I love me some Baker Mania, but again, like you said, underdog, I would love to see Detroit win. Um, that's gonna be my that's gonna be my final answer. Hey, <laughs> Regis, we just <laughs> final answer. If you want to get from to that, go back to our Christmas special. Dad, your thoughts? <laughs> um. I'm gonna have to go with Detroit, uh, only because on how they've been playing and they 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 seem like they're all on the same page. They're unified as a team should be. 
they're all cohesive. So I think it's going to take that momentum into that next that next uh, playoff picture, the next round. Um, it, you know what's funny about Detroit? You know how I went on this whole tangent when we started the, the NFL talk today, where I hate the Cowboys and I hate the Eagles. I have never seen so many people that are fans of the Packers, the Vikings, the Bears, have no hatred for the Lions, but they want to see them succeed finally. <laughs> they want to see yeah. them finally <laughs> succeed. Like, I've never seen them before. Yeah, but I've never seen it before. We're like a rival team. They're rooting them on because they want to see them finally do something good. Yeah. <laughs> so in that case, I am going to pick Detroit. Just because I think it'd be so damn funny for them to make it to the conference final. <laughs> to, to have a conference final held in Detroit might just be one of the craziest heads of things we're going to see this year if that happens. <laughs> yeah. um, and finally, in San Francisco, it is a night game, by the way. This game's going to be a night. Uh, it is Green Bay Packers versus San Francisco 49ers. First seven seed to ever make it out of, out of the wild card round. I, you know where dad stands. You know where I stand. Now, mm-hmm. where do you stand on this? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to keep going with the underdog. I think the Packers are actually going to win. And again, it's going to be another three point thing. Oh, it's going to be close. Be a lot closer than um, that. Mm-hmm. Be a great game. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's fun. for sure. Um, but I, I, don't know. I would I expect just... overtime. I would expect overtime for this one. You know what I mean? Like I expect. Yeah, yeah I can see that. That, that. that could be a good possibility. But I, I, I think the 49ers are going to not take them seriously, and I think it's going to bite them in the ass. That's 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 my thought. I'm going back to my comparison to the succeeded New York Giants and when all the Super Bowl that they they beat they, every team they faced. They're like, oh, it's just a 60 to team. Who cares? And they beat Dallas and they right. beat San Francisco. Because that run. <laughs> so throwing Detroit in there is, is, is a whole different ballgame. But like yeah, it's really strange. I'm just gonna go along with that storyline that I, I set from the from the 60 to Giants and win all the Super Bowl. So I know Dad just to stay with your pick officially on the on the record. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's the Packers. I know we're going into as as the underdogs, but here's the thing. You back a dog in the corner, what's the dog going to do? The dog's going to come out and bite and attack and be fierce, and that's what the Packers are going to do. You back them into the corner, they're going to come out fighting. So before we move on to this, um, two things. First of all, I forgot to bring it up in time to this, was the whole coaching craziness that happened right before the wild card, where in a matter of, oh, in a matter of 48 hours, um, Nick Saban retires. Yep. Pe- Carol gets moved to the front office and then Bill Belichick leaves New England. All in a matter of 24 hours. I, that was some of the craziest things. I'm like, wait, all this happened at once? <laughs> all this happened at one time? Just, um, so Pip Belichick, by the way, is already interviewing for New Jams. <laughs> <laughs> him, he already, he either, him and Jim Harbaugh, they both got interviewed by Atlanta already. Huh. So that already broke before we, that, the, the Jim Harbaugh thing broke up before we came on. So those mm-hmm. two things already happened. Um, although I just for a graph, just for something that Nick Saban has never had a losing season in his entire college run. Oh. Okay. And there were and there was team there were players. I heard this on the fan that there were players that came in as freshmen, who graduated as seniors, and they never had at least they only had at least one championship in their four years. <laughs> every single every single class had at least one championship in their four years during Nick Saban's run. Okay. Nick That's Saban's insane. got That's a great <laughs> Nick Saban's got a great program working for him and he knows how to pick the players he, that he needs. So I mean you got that going for you and you 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 worked at it for so long. You know, it, it, it's amazing for for how long he's been doing this and having that right combination of players and coaches and to say that okay I'm done, and you walk away. He's going out with his head held high, and there's nothing that I'm aware of that he should be sorry for or ashamed of. Everything Absolutely. he's done is is to his betterment, and hopefully, uh, when everything's all you know said and done at the end of the college season, that somewhere along the line at <laughs> college. They name the Nick Saban Memorial, you know, field or whatever. They rename I, it. I, I say do that when he's alive so we can enjoy it. Oh, yeah. 
without and a doubt. So, so, Sal, how weird is it that next season, Bill Belichick is not going to be the coach of the New England Patriots? I know. It's just that. <laughs> it's wild. I mean. 24 years. 24 yeah. years. Like, yeah. He, he, was, know, he, and... he was the, he became the coach of the Patriots when I was a senior. I just like the bit I had the video. Like, I was a senior in high school. What did he be at the coach of the Patriots? <laughs> I think it's gonna be even I think it's gonna be even weirder if he's wearing different colors next year. I don't think he will be, from what I'm hearing. He will be going somewhere else. If it was a straight up retirement, yeah, but it's gonna be even more weird if no he's wearing red or whatever. Yeah. But my thing is were were the was the head office were they going to give him the axe anyways? I don't know. How, I, a bunch? Like, I have a feeling you don't fire Bill Belichick. You negotiate to get him to leave, and I think that's what happened here. Because if he just flat out retired, he um I think he had another year on his contract, so he had to negotiate to leave. And they asked him from what I've heard, they tried to trade him like they did. Like um, who was the coach that got traded? From New Orleans. I can't think of it right now. Oh, yeah. I forgot you could trade coaches. Yeah, that <laughs> happened with New Orleans. Um, the hell, Sean Payton. Sean Payton. And um, yes. they, they were trying to do the same thing, and apparently nobody bit on a deal. So they had to make a decision. Do you let him retire? Do you let him leave? Or do you, like, you had to make a deal with him, and he made a deal where they won't have to pay him out for his last year, so he's a full free agent. You can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> Well, my thing is, what organization I, can afford salary of Bill anybody, Belichick? Anybody can. I really. I, I, I. What happened to Dallas Fires Martin McCarthy? I almost expect them to talk to him. You know, I don't know if him and Jerry Jones get along, but like, I. They, I used, them they used to. I mean, they, they used to <laughs> until Sunday. But no, I'm just saying, like, uh, no, I'm talking about, about Belichick and um, Jerry Jones. Yeah. I don't know if they get along. Like I'm not sure if they'd be able to get along because the Belichick, no. Belichick does teams. No, so I, I, I don't. I, teams. I don't. I don't think so because I think uh, Coach Belichick, uh, to me, is one of these people that basically kind of said, "I'm the coach. I run it. This is my program." That's what I mean, I don't think they'd yeah. get along. Like I don't think no. they would get along no. at all. Because Belichick would have no problem telling Jerry Jones that, "Hey, you're the owner. You sit back. I do the rest of the work." You take in all the rest of the stuff. I do the rest of work. I coach you owner. Exactly. So I don't know. I will find out. I trust me. Once new strike, we will talk about it here because I really want to know how this is going to go. Um, the only issue, I think it was um, Tiki Barber on the fan brought this up. They have to go through a, no matter what team hires him, they can't just flat out hire him. It's not like the NHL where you can just flat out hire somebody. You have to go through the whole process. You have to go through the Rooney rule. Yeah. You go through all the stuff. Before I liked, I love New England because they said, Okay, fine. We have to go through a rule. We're hiring a black coach, so now you can't say shit to us. You can't say <laughs> shit. <laughs> that made me laugh so hard when I showed up. Like, I see what you did. I see exactly yeah. what you did here. <laughs> can't stop us. You knew who you wanted, and he was a minority. So now the NFL can't say shit to you. Like, <laughs> there you go. Like that was brilliant <laughs> on their part. So, here we go. That is that. Let's get. Let's not move on. We have so much of stuff to get through. So. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. Um, so we'll go through some news and notes here. Not, and we're not going to go through, like, every single company. All because I was going to last week. <laughs> not as much as there was last week. But we do have some big stuff to talk about. Um, first of all, um, three things first. I put this first. To get it out of the way. So, it, it, who the hell expected in 2024 for the main event of Raw to be Seth Rollins versus Jinder Mahal? Like, who the yeah. hell store that one coming? Number one. And number two. For all the dumbasses that were watching this and legitimately 100% thought that Jinder Mahal, Jinder Mahal, who hasn't been relevant in seven years and hasn't won a match, I think, in like two, <laughs> actually going to beat Seth Rollins in the main event completely uphanding the, all the WrestleMania plans and everything else they already have in store for the next three months, you're a bunch of fucking morons. <laughs> you all are fucking idiots. Because people legitimately thought, legitimately thought that that was a possible thing to happen. 
But you all morons, all of you. Because well, that could have been his 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 quote unquote payback for having to drop the title to uh, um, was it? Brock oh, he lost to AJ. He lost to AJ. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, he lost AJ. Like he lost legitimately to somebody. It wasn't it wasn't like right, right before uh, Survivor Series? <laughs> yeah, it was AJ. But um, no. I, I, oh my God, people! Like, come on. You know, like people were so legitimately pissed off on Tuesday morning. That the hall didn't win, like legitimately. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with all of you? Like, what is wrong with you? To me, gender was good. I'm being the mouthpiece for Indushare, and I think he should have stayed at that. But now, it's, it's one match. He's not getting pushed. It was one match, and it yeah. was almost like a hey, we 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 got to be in the ring with Rock. We're thanking you for getting us over with the rock thing. Congratulations, mm-hmm. you got relevant for a week. Mm-hmm. We'll put you in if Seth needed an opponent. We're not sure he's even defending the belt at the rumble. He likes mm-hmm. to have a monthly opponents. We're giving him a match on Raw. That's all this was. And then Tony Khan decides to make a big deal out of it. And everyone jumps all over <laughs> it. And we'll get to Tony Khan in a minute, but like, come on, people, chill the fuck out. I to me, I think it, it was more airtime for Indusheer than basically focusing on uh, Jinder Mahal. I will say though, and I know Saturday you didn't watch the match live. The main event, the match was good. It wasn't terrible, like you expect terrible matches from Mahal. It was not a terrible match at all. Mm-hmm. And thanks to Seth Rollins for that. But I give them all the credit in the world because there's no overrun on Raw, and everyone knows there's no overrun on Raw anymore. So we get to like three minutes left in the show. And Damian Priest is out there, and he got chased out by Dave, Drew McIntyre. So There's not going to be a cash in, and all this stuff. But they left the briefcase behind. So Andrew Shear grabbed the briefcase, hits fucking um, Seth with the briefcase, but the referee turned his back to watch it and to get Drew and um, and to watch Drew and um, Damian leave. Mm-hmm. It hit him in the head with the briefcase. He gets into the um, Mahal hit the closet. Even I, me and Mandy, even looked at him like, no fucking way. Are they actually going to do this? <laughs> we fell for it for a half a second. We really did. <laughs> like, like, no fucking way. It didn't, obviously. But the more important thing here, there's a possibility that Seth may have hurt his knee in this match. Uh-oh. And we don't know more details yet. We're waiting yeah. details. Um, it could be as simple as a bruise, and he's just going to miss the rumble, and that's not a big problem because he wasn't booked on the show anyway. That's the man; he wasn't booked on the show anyway, so it's really not that big of a problem. Or you have a tear, and he's out for months, and they got to figure something out. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's weird. It's a weird situation we're in the middle of here, with no one seems to know details yet. He did walk. He did walking. He was walking under his own power. From what I heard, that's good news. But again, I didn't have the many results from his MRI yet. So, any yeah. thoughts on any of this? And what what would you do? Seth hurt. What would you do, Sal? Um, it's tough because you know, it, obviously, depending on the severity, if it's something that's not crazy, I would say obviously keep him out of matches until WrestleMania, somehow. Right. Um. But if it's severe and he's not going to be good until then, and it's a guarantee that he will not be able to be good until then, uh oh. Exactly. What, what is plan B? Yeah, what the fuck is plan B? Because yeah, that's, that's a plan? tough one. Exactly. That's, that's tough. the problem. Yeah, that's the issue. And that's you know, the problem here, you know? Yeah, if... I'd say do a cash in at that point and just yeah. get rid of the briefcase. Exactly. If you, if you yeah. get out there and hopefully, like, not like it's not going to hurt him. Do a cash mm-hmm. like you did with Edge on Taker, like we did Edge and Taker back in the day. Right. So, I mean, that kind of situation. No, I'm with you, Sal, on that. And then you go from there. Then you go from there. Then you do like Priest first. Then you figure out what you're doing with Priest and Punk, and you can even throw Drew in there. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm just checking to see if there's any update while we're talking here. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. My, my thing is, if it's not that severe of an injury, I would still wrap it, put a brace on it to basically protect it so that it doesn't get injured further. But yeah, the plan B would be the trigger where Damien actually cashes in the briefcase. And yeah, he does win. He does get the title. I mean, that sets up a, a program, like I said, between you and CM Punk or him and CM Punk or, or him and Drew. 
Or triple uh, threat. Or you could do a triple threat. Right. Because my thing is, I think Drew would be happy on getting a championship title. And that would be, I think, enough to, to quiet Drew is give him that. And as far as, you know, the, the bigger title, you know, if you're still going with the program with uh, Cody and, and finishing the story, then there you go. Yeah, I don't know. This is a weird one. Like, I'm literally up to, and by the way, I, I, just, I, I should know better not to go on wrestling social media to ask questions because there's a bunch of Seth Rollins haters that are hoping he's hurt. So I'm like, I don't, I'm not going that. Um, <laughs> I'll wait till legitimate news comes out because I, I follow enough news place that I can get legitimate news soon. Mm-hmm. Um, if I get an alert before the end of the show, I'll let everybody know. But um, speaking of injuries, though, we have a legit injury. Um, this broke in the middle of the um, in the middle of um, Heart Kill on Saturday. The core Jade at a house show got hurt. She tore her ACL. It's going to be out nine months to a year. No, no, legitimately. No, no, no. This is legit. 100% legit. No, I mean, her. no, nine months. <laughs> oh, hey, your nine months joke is getting old here because this is a legitimate injury. <laughs> like, it's the second time you had a legitimate injury and you're making the same stupid joke. Um, you it, yeah, you know, it's Charlotte and she's not even, as far as we know. <laughs> but no, like, all jokes aside, like, like it, um, for people in the building, it looked bad. The people in the building that were at this house yep. show were really, really bad. They had a stop. They had a it was magic in turn. As I said to Mandy, I'm like, I wonder if Cora was supposed to win the Battle Royal four way thing they did on NXT this week. Because they did a Battle Royal, and then the last four had a four way to turn a contender for Judgment mm-hmm. for, for um, Vengeance Day. And I, I would feel like Cora was supposed to win that match because Cora was fighting Lyra, yeah, house show circuit on the on the on the on the, on the, um, on the coconut loop. Mm-hmm. So I have a feeling that's what they were doing. So yep. she's gonna be out for almost a year. That sucks. She the other thing I don't know is came back. The other thing that came up too is how many of the females within this past year had ACL problems where that took them out for a while. And now they're looking at and whether or not the NXT's training is under scrutiny regarding I read that too. Meetings. I've read I've heard that too. I don't Take that that seriously. It's wrestling. People get hurt in yeah. the freakiest ways possible. <clears throat> like we've seen it happen. Like remember, remember, we always joke about it, but remember, Randy Orton threw out his shoulder doing his fist pumping thing before an RKO. Right. Like we <laughs> see weird injuries happen in the weirdest right. possible. But remember, we used to remember Kevin Nash walked down, like literally stepped in the ring and rolled his quad. Like we see yeah. shit like this happen all the time. Like I'm not gonna blame how they train at the performance center for in- for freak injuries and injuries like that. Like you can't. Like it's not that fair to everyone else who is not hurt. Who didn't so, get hurt. You know my, I mean? my my question is, are they gonna get away from doing things like you know kicks to the knee and things of that na- nature? No, oh, because that's and, half the show. Like it's literally yeah. half the show. I, I'm just. I don't just know. The, I, can, I, I can remember with um Charlotte, she landed wrong. She literally just landed wrong, yeah. and poor yeah, like shit happens. And Charlotte's one yeah. of the most in shape wrestlers in with wrestling yeah. in the company. So like, yeah. it's gonna happen to Charlotte. It's gonna happen to anybody. Like, it's gonna happen. But um, yeah. So that sucks. So I mentioned it before, Mister Tony Khan, <laughs> Mr. and boy Tony Khan, can somebody. I know he's, I know he runs it. Somebody needs to take his fucking phone away from him. <laughs> he does not shut up on Twitter X. He does not shut up ever. And it doesn't help that we're dealing with this weird Chris Jericho situation that we got, we're talking about last show. Mm-hmm. And we're dealing with that. But like, for fucking, um, for fucking Tony Khan to literally go, and talk shit about the main event of Raw. And they mm-hmm. counteract it with, ooh, um, people are complaining about my main event when nobody was at all, period. So, like, I, I just have issues with how dumb this man is sometimes, Sal. Yeah. Um, uh, just worry about your own business. Worry about your own business. Worry about your own company. You still got a lot of shit going on. You know, 
worry worry about you, Boo, and then let, let, let the others take care of themselves. Dad, any thoughts? Uh, the thing with Tony is that he's got to remember if you're taking shots at your competitors that they're going to turn around and take shots at you back. And, you they're, know, they're not. That's the problem. They're not. What? He can't take shots at WWE for some reason all the time. And nobody says a damn thing back to him because they don't have to. I'm, 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 have I'm to. waiting for it. I'm waiting for but it. The thing is, they don't have to. They don't have to say anything. And, and, That's and my the point. Thing is, this, mm-hmm. is, this is the way, and I like it, how Paul Levesque Triple H thinks. He figures, why should I, you know, have a war of words and stoop to Tony's level when if I don't say anything, I'm still turning out to be the good guy? You know, I'm I'm not acting like Tony on, on Twitter. I'm the good guy. I'm the one that's not, you know, trying to start a okay. war of words I will say this. companies. I will say this. I just really, I found the I found the tweets, but I I just he didn't delete any of these tweets. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, <laughs> and um, Tony Khan didn't even comment on a post from anybody. He commented on a post where USA Network, USA Network, was giving shit <laughs> because they can, and they were talking to Raj Geary. They weren't even talking to Tony. They were talking to Raj Geary, <laughs> formerly for Wrestling Inc. And all they said was, um, what, was the, what, was the Raj, what was Raj talking about? I can't find that. Oh, they were talking about Jinder and Seth. Right? And he was literally just talking about their history because they had a history of they had a match in the NXT, original NXT championship tournament. And it's literally all he was talking about. And, and you would say Network made a joke saying, well, what was the cage match rating? <laughs> Which admittedly is very funny. If you know TK, he's upset the cage match rating. And fucking Tony Khan comes out and attacks WWE based on a USA Network tweet. <laughs> Look, it's so stupid. <laughs> and then gets into a fight with Eric Bischoff. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? It's so dumb. Like, don't you have better things to do? You're literally running two wrestling companies for some reason. And you're <laughs> half stuff going on with the Jack and Network. They were still relevant at the time of this all went down. And then um, whatever the hell goes on with Fulham. Like, you're a busy person. You literally have jobs that normal people, one of those jobs is enough for them. He does all of them. I don't, I, I think he found, figured out a way to like do more than 40 hours, do more than 24 hours in a day at this point. <laughs> Yet you have yeah. time to go on Twitter and talk shit. Here's, <laughs> here's the thing that I really don't get in Tony Khan in his world or real house is. You know, you want to be the owner, you want to be this, but for some reason, he's afraid to delegate responsible jobs to people. For anybody, he, anything, for anybody. He, you know, he wants to do it all himself. Okay, well then, if you're going to do it all your on your own or do it by yourself, then you got to take the good with the bad that comes with it. But if you delegate, you can say, well, I delegated this to this person, so they screwed up. And, you know, not that I screwed up, they screwed up. But you still, you know, you're making the comp- your company look bad by having this war of words, and, and, and it's like sour grapes, you know. And it wasn't even like necessary either, to be no, honest. No, it wasn't. You know, exactly. And he- here's the thing, Tony. Okay, you want to run your company, run the company. Don't give them any more ammunition that they can use against you to make yourself look bad than what or worse than what you are. Just run your company, and just leave it at that. Agreed. Um, the one thing that did come out of all this that was hidden in the background of all this was the fact that, and this match will already have happened by the time this episode dropped, but I do want to talk about it because it's a big deal that Samoa Joe versus Hook is happening on Dynamite. <laughs> Hook is a main eventer. Yes. How do we yes. feel about Hook being a main eventer? Like, who, I, I did not expect this. This kind of came out of nowhere. I'm happy for him. Don't get me wrong. And it's going to be really fun for Taz to follow this match on Dynamite. Mm-hmm. But, um, Hook's a main eventer. How do you feel? Um, it's different, and you know we've seen the same people over and over again. So why not take an opportunity? Give give the kid a shot. Yep. Exactly, Dad. With Hook's record, you you can't dispute that. So, I mean, yeah, give him his shot. See what he does with it. Is it going to be like a a David and Goliath type of situation? Yeah, no doubt. 
And, you know, a lot of people want to root for Hulk and the underdog. And and they would want him to take the belt off of Samoa Joe. But realistically, I don't think that's where the program is headed. Oh, it's not. We we know it's not. The belt's not coming off of Joe. I, I, it's just so crazy to me that Hook's going to be main eventing a show. I, I, would, I would love for Hook to make a good showing and to try to get him in Red Room and try to get Joe to tap. Because then you can say, hey, I'm the one that made Joe tap. Not that he made me tap. By the way, I do want to say, I will say, I think it's funny that Joe and um, Hook have the, pretty much the exact same finishing move when it comes to submission. They literally have the exact same finishing move. Mm-hmm. The Todd yep. May and the Red Rum are the exact same move. Like, yep. they really are. <laughs> like, it's hysterical to me. Um, let's move on. Um, so Saturday night was an insane night of wrestling programming. And even if you didn't watch everything, you kind of knew the news of mm-hmm. everything going on. Um, <laughs> Jack Perry. Another the name we haven't said in a while. We haven't said his name since September. Um, since he caused a big fight and got the punk fired. Um, Jack Perry made a surprise appearance in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Who the hell saw that one coming? Um, uh, <laughs> I can show to Umino at the Battle of the Valley. But, uh, but Shota Umino was to have an opening match and the match. Well, he had an opening match and that happened. And then um, and, Shota, and then Jack Perry came out of the crowd and attacked him. By the way, apparently no one told the security guards that this is supposed to happen. Oh, which told security? Oops. Um, and they had to tell security in the moment that Relax is one of our guys, just to keep it a secret. Um, so uh, Jack Perry came off and he attacked Shota Umino and then got in the ring and everyone started booing him and then he ripped up his AEW contract. Ripped up the day. See, that's where the quotation marks come in. Now. Uh, <laughs> um, Alleged contract. Well, it, it, it's an AEW contract. It's not his real contract. Everyone knows that. But no. this is an interesting move. Uh, it's really interesting that they're doing this. Um, Dad, your thoughts on Jack Perry in New Japan? Uh, here's the thing. The forbidden door swings both ways. So, I mean, now it's time for someone to come through the other direction and it is Jack Perry. I didn't see that one coming, obviously. <laughs> I, neither did I. And my thing is, you know, if you're going to go someplace to kind of hone your craft better, where better to do it than New Japan? You'll get a real uh, eye-opening training and eye-opening, you know, experience in New Japan. And then you can take what you got from there and come back. I mean, a lot of other wrestlers before you have do- done that, and they've turned out more successful from doing that. So hopefully, I, I hopefully this is the way he's looking at it is for him to be more successful by being in New Japan and learning their techniques and their training and taking it back. Now, as an outsider of New Japan, your thoughts on this surprising news? Um, if they're going to continue with this like heel turn that he did, that was pretty, you know, that ended pretty abruptly because of the whole CM Punk thing. Um, what a better way to build on that and then let him get to a, a level and then have him come back and you know people might take him more seriously as a heel if that's what they want to do by the way he had an armband that says scapegoat which was like wow scapegoat scapegoat, scapegoat? like wow oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, man, that's the direction we're going in okay. well, we're, we're still harboring some ill wills i guess well it, it, I, I like the story because like he could always say well why did i get why did i get in trouble when cm punk's the one that caused all the issues like I, he actually even say something like that if he wanted to and you know there's a new japan because you can say that on new japan tv you can't say that on aw television like, right <laughs> oh. Oops. so now both parties that have been involved in his altercation or in different locations. Pretty much. Um, by the way, I didn't put this on the rent but I just remembered this. There are mm-hmm. they announced a couple of matches for Windy City Riot, the next new Japan show in the States. And I didn't watch I didn't buy a bottle of the Valley because I was watching um Hard to Kill and I just couldn't warrant buying a pay another twenty bucks on another show. But um they announced two big matches for the show in in Chicago. Um one is Mox versus um um Naito the first time in the States. Wow. The other match, which I did not expect, is Hiromu Takahashi versus Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali. Uh, okay. uh, why? Because Mustafa Ali challenged him to a match, so he accepted. Okay. That's why. I think that's pretty valid. I think that's fair. 
I, okay, that and, and, okay, and, and that reason it is, I just, you know, it's, it, 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 oh, wow, it's like a fish out of water. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that one. I forgot to tell you about that one. <laughs> you know. it's, it's like a fish out of water. Let's see if he sinks or swims. Uh, moving on, we joked about it at the top of the show. I didn't think we'd be talking about this on the air, but we got to because Sal's been enjoying it so much, and I have to talk about something else yeah. but enjoying this week. So two things we've both been enjoying. I literally put it on the run sheet of WWE NXT Unexpected Comedy. <laughs> and while I'm not a huge super opponent of the whole thing, there have been moments where I'm laughing. I'm not going to lie. There have been moments where I'm laughing. <laughs> and watching Damian Priest not break, I'm trying not to break, is making me very laugh really hard. But our truth in the Judgment Day what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Where the hell did this come from? And why is it almost working? Uh, you're I, not in the judgment day. Well, look at my t-shirt shoulders. And here's your cut. Okay, you're in the judgment day. No, I know you've been uh, doing this from the beginning. Go ahead. I love our truth And no matter what he does, I mean, yeah, it's it, it sucks if he's only good for comedy, but it's damn good comedy, and it's like you need it. You need that comic break in the middle of a three-hour fucking show, and it works. And no matter what you, situation you put him in, he will find a way to make it funny. And I absolutely love him for that. And I think he's brilliant. At whether or not he's coming up with any of that stuff, I don't know. Obviously, I, you know I'm what? assuming I, he's coming up with some of it. Watching, we watched his talk show that he did on the network couple years ago trust me i guarantee he's, he's being asked what he wants to do in this bit i guarantee he is because yeah. of how damn funny he naturally is i can only imagine what they're asking him to do the the facial expressions he has just are great when he's delivering these lines and it's just you know it's in his wheelhouse it's, it's going great and to basically incorporate <clears throat> People from the Judgment Day, especially Damian Priest, who's playing the, obviously the straight guy, and then when he hands him this wad of money, go oh, yeah, here's your cut, and you can tell that Damian just kind of went, okay, I, 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 I get my line. I, I pop when Damian looked at JD and was like, "Your name's not on the T-shirt. I don't think you're getting a cut from this." <laughs> he popped at that because that's so, <laughs> he, that's so funny to me. Like, <laughs> and then and then it gets better when he goes and talks to other members. He goes, "This is oh, this is my cut. You can ask truth about your cut, right?" I, it's stuff like that. Like the, the fun part is like with Sammy with with um with 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 the um fun line. The reason that worked wasn't because of Sammy. It was because of everybody else around him. That's why that worked. I think that's what's going on here. Truth is funny, but everyone else around him playing off of him is what making it work even better. <laughs> like, that's just making it work. For the, no matter who he's having a interaction with, whether it's Dom, whether it's Finn, whether it's JD, for them to play the role of the straight guy and 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 be the, the, the character that isn't as comical or more serious is phenomenal because when truth comes up with these lines and the punchlines and everything, you can see that it's hard for them to keep their composure. I know that's what I mean. It's watching them break. It's yeah. so funny to me. He but, can get Dom to break easy because I've seen Dom break and he's they've kind of Dom you know, also doesn't off need camera. to be serious. Dom doesn't need to be serious for his character to work. That's oh, the difference right. though. Dom doesn't need it. Dom is always laughing at everything all the time anyway. <laughs> but, but then but then would with our truth comes up the JD goes, I don't see your name on the t-shirt either. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I, I have to throw out something that I'm enjoying that I didn't expect to enjoy. Um NXT we have the Dusty going, the Dusty Classic going on right now. Yep. A couple weeks ago, um Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker became a tag team. And their reason they became a tag team is they both admitted that they're both assholes. <laughs> Which yeah. admittedly is funny on its own. Well, this week on NXT, I'm cackling. I'm literally sitting in my chair cackling at the two of them going back and forth in a promo interview while Braun is dead, is literally deadpanning 
terrible team name to them. And Baron Corbin looking at him like he's a fucking idiot. I am laughing my ass off. I have never uh, enjoyed Baron Corbin so fucking much <laughs> until watching him play off of Braun Breaker. Like, this is so insanely hysterical to me. Go on and watch this thing if you haven't seen it. The two of them going back and forth is one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. <laughs> what was the one team, the name he came up with? Wolf dogs, wolf dogs, wolf dogs, <laughs> <laughs> and that like no, no, that wasn't even the worst part for me. Okay, so I'll, I'll set this up. He goes, I mean, he, he says, I have a name for us. Well, I was like, I have a name for us. I've been thinking about this for for weeks, for four, three to four weeks. And her looks like we've only been together for two weeks. We've only been together for two weeks. I was like, oh no. And he's like, yeah, I was in the shower thinking about you. And he's like, wait, you were thinking about me at the shower? <laughs> No, yeah. I was like, the team at the shower. Like, that's not much better. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is so damn funny. Like, this should not be funny. This should not work. And I'm laughing my ass off watching this whole segment. But yeah, that one was, was, was um, the wolf dogs. <laughs> he was obsessed with his name. And then, and then, <laughs> and then Baron kind of looks, you know, thinks you're wolf dogs. Wolf dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I, admittedly, this is I'm, it's, uh, I'm sending you to watch it after we're done with the show because it's it, this is hilarious. <laughs> but um, I was waiting for Baron to dope slap him. I really like, was. I just love the fact they like, that they, they look. He looks at um, looks at Kelly Kincaid. Is like he's more of an a hole than I am. And he's like I have to be biased. But you're both a holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That. that was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Plus, I, you're biased. Oh, All right. My. Okay. So, um, last thing, he and a hard to kill happened this past weekend. Yes. And I gotta admit, it was a good show. It was a really good show. They yes. put on a hell of yes. a show for their return. I yeah. love the venue. I love the the fact that it was only three hours. The show with pay per view was three hours. That was it. They fit nine matches in the three hours. Um, nice. including an Ultimate X match. Like they did all this in three hours. Um, they had multiple title changes. They had a bunch of stuff go down. Um, I found out apparently Vladimir Kozlov's in TNA now. I didn't know that was a thing. Apparently, he's part what? of Rick Dangle's faction. I don't know that was a thing. Um, okay. That was a thing that happened. But more importantly, the show ended with um, Moose hitting, um, uh, hitting um, Alex Shelley for some reason yes. to win the TNA championship. And um, as him and his faction are celebrating, Nick Nemeth music hits. He comes out and he attacks Moose. And then he goes in the crowd and he's celebrating in the crowd and he rips off his shirt and he's wearing a TNA wrestling shirt. So Nick Nemeth is now in TNA wrestling. Mm-hmm. He's also in New Japan. And then at the same time, there was a match announced for GCW the, the coldest winter on February 3rd. Him versus Matt Cardona is happening there. Um, sure. Nick Nemeth is everywhere. And also, um, asked by Elegance, aka Dana, formerly known as Dana Brooke, was also at the show. But Nick Nemeth is everywhere. What a terrible um, name. Can we just talk about that for a quick second? Go ahead, go ahead. Who came up with that name? Who the fuck came up with that name and said to themselves, that is a great wrestling name? Um, Scott, it had to be done by Scott Demore. It's the only thing I got to say. According to what Mandy told me, she, I think it came from her. Because it was on her Instagram page before well, he did the dude. Isn't isn't her isn't her name Ashley? The yeah. real name Ashley? Her name is Ashley. Okay. But yeah, Ash by Elegance. That was so stupid. Like I'll admit that was dumb. Like Trinity did lose the knockout the knockout championship to Jordan Grace, and it sounds like Trinity's on her way out of TNA. So, so that's that, that's that. And they already hypocrite. Hypocrite. So they, I don't remember, as I said to Mandy, her and Mercedes had issues with Vince McMahon. McMahon is no longer running WWE. So, <laughs> if they have a better relationship with Paul Levesque, we're under different rules now. They're, under right. they're rules. still a hypocrite. Yep. Are you, though? Are you really a hypocrite, though? If you're coming back and work with somebody else that was not the person you, you walked out on? Here's here's the yes. thing with Paul. No, wait, 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 wait. Actually, I want to follow up on this. Now. Okay, continue. Why? Okay. Because he's still involved with the company in, in, in a very small, tiny capacity. Kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of. <laughs> until the documentary, until that Netflix show comes out. <laughs> but the difference yeah. between Paul 
and Vince is that Vince's view of business is completely off skew, whereas Paul's isn't. Off where skew. You, That's a nice word. Off skew. Off I feel skew. like the definition of this right elegant sounds like a name that Vince McMahon would have came up with. I'm not Probably. wrong. I'm not wrong. Oh, you're not wrong. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is all those the talent that got released, I knew that Paul would still have some feelers out for these people because he knew that some of these guys that were released had the talent and they just needed to basically come back and basically get a little bit more training and airtime and take their character to the no, another level where Vince didn't believe in giving quote unquote second chances unless you were going to bring some big buckos back into the business. And what's funny to me about that is that Mercedes, Sasha, whatever how we're calling her, depending on what company she decides to sign with, will bring in money for whoever she goes to. Right. Let's be honest here. Like, let's be honest here. Well, if it's the Trinity, Naomi, she's not going to bring in the money that you know Sasha slash Mercedes will. Right. And let's be honest here. Right? And, you know, when Naomi comes back, you know, let's see if they incorporate her your character into the bloodline. Um, I will say one thing. While I don't have, and I, I refuse to watch wrestling on Thursday nights. I need a night off. I'm not watching wrestling on Thursday nights. It's not WrestleMania week. It's not mm -hmm. thing I'm doing. I did pick up TNA, the uh, TNA Plus, because I do want to watch the show the next couple of weeks on Fridays when I like doing laundry around the house and doing shit around the house when I normally do, because the main event for the next two week show have Will Ospreay and Okada in it. So I can't miss those shows. <laughs> like it's, no. those are things I can't there miss. You go. There this week's main event is fucking um Alexander versus Osprey, and next week Okada is tagging with them under the machine guns. So like those are things I cannot personally miss as fans of both men. So TNA, this is your opportunity, not just me, but other people. They're gonna watch this show for these people. You got a couple of weeks to win people over. Like win people over. You have these two weeks of people that don't normally watch your show. They're gonna watch your show for these matches. Win people over. You have time. Go for it. You did a really good pay-per-view. Now it's time to actually, you know, do more. Don't rest on your loyals now. Don't rest on your right. loyals. Have some, do some good shows in a couple of weeks. I, th I think the good thing that w one of the good things with TNA is bringing in Alexander Hammerstone and uh, him giving him more exposure. And I think he's going to be over with the fans at TNA. I think he's going to come up more big. I'm not going to lie, um, that was the best Hammerstone match I've ever seen, and we saw, what, 17 matches of his when we were yes, at the yes. Olympics? So, like, that was, like, yeah, the so best Hammerstone match I've ever seen. My my sure. thing is, if he gets over big in TNA, will this give him enough of a look-see for, say, a WWE to maybe put some feelers out when the time comes? I don't think they need him. I think TNA needs him more right now. I think TNA actually needs him more right now. Yeah, they need they need a solid uh, performer like uh, like him. They really do because their Let's roster. Make a trade. Can... Let's make a trade. We'll t I'll take Alexander Hammerstone in NXT, and they can have Lexus fucking King. Let's make that trade. Then I'll have to deal with Lexus fucking King on my television every week. <laughs> and that wonderful type of beard he's got. I I really want to punch him in the face every time I see him, and it's not the kind of like. Fun punch him in the face, punch him in the face like we do a Dom, dirty Dom. No, I legitimately want to hurt him, break his nose so he can get off my television screen. I do not like the guy. I didn't like the guy when he was in AEW as Brian Pumman Jr. Get off my damn television. I'm so sick of seeing your face. So, so basically, <laughs> what you're telling me is this character gimmick is getting over. No, it's not getting over. <laughs> it's like Xbox key. Like, <laughs> well, you know, it's the, it's the beard that makes it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, let's get out of here. Exactly went longer than I thought it would. Um, okay. What's the show, Sal. What are we closing with? Uh, this is uh, Teddy Swims. I just came across this uh, about two, three weeks ago. It's really good. He actually duetted with Kelly Clarkson on this song too, which I still have to find. Um, and it's called Lose Control. Yeah. Funny part is, I, I was like, I'm gonna ask Sal for his outro, and I'm like, what? and then literally right after the um. The billboard charts came out. I'm like, he's gonna ask me to play Teddy Swims, isn't he? Like, I just knew, <laughs> but I, I just knew it. Like, wow, <laughs> I've known you well enough to know exactly what you're gonna do on this. I just had a gut feeling. <laughs> X gets the square. Oh man, all right, Sal, go ahead. 
Uh, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube, go to thewakeofsoccer.com and please, please, please don't forget, comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. That's your thing. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure, and please send us warmer weather. I don't care where it comes from. Give us some heat, whether it's coming from Texas, Miami. I'll take 30s. Texas, I'll take fucking 30s right now. <laughs> Damn straight, I'll take that. Hey, and if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at, please patronize this business. These are young men and women that are coming up in the world, professional entertainment, sports entertainment, professional wrestling. They want to show you what they're able to do as far as their moves, their promo mic skills, their character gimmick, the whole package, so that way they get noticed and eventually get into a major wrestling organization for that brass ring they're reaching for. And just please, no matter where you're at in the wrestling matches, do it responsibly. Don't be a jerk. Don't be a butthead. Don't be an asshole. Be a nice person. It doesn't take that much to be a nice person. Um, Next week, it is Royal Rumble week. That's shocking, isn't it? It's right. Right. Already? Right here. Right here, um, Rumble and the NFL, and the NFL championship weekend are the same weekend. We have the Royal Rumble on Sunday and the championship game. Uh, the Royal Rumble on Saturday and the championship games on Sunday. Go figure. Oh, great weekend! <laughs> great weekend. So that's Bigger mania. So we know what we're going to be talking about next week. That's easy. Next week, one of the easiest shows for us to do is next week. Um, <laughs> we'll do it next week. We'll get out of here. Um, I'm Blake. I'm Tom. I'm Mark. And you've been listening to the Blake and Sasha show with Mark. Have a good day. Love you guys. Keep warm. Yeah. Please keep warm. I lose control when you're not here with me. Mm. I'm falling apart right in front of you. Can you see me? I'm falling on me. Can you break in my heart, baby? You're not Thank you so very much. Goodbye Mwah. and good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs>